are we filming yes we are so this is a review i haven't done a review for uh, a little while um but i have got stacks of reviews to do uh, so i'm going to try and do at least one a week for the foreseeable um what is this this isn't a file fax, so what is it well let me turn it over and give you a clue and I'm going to compare this to a binder that I've had for over 10 years. So this is this is an ARC notebook, a uh, dismount but notebook that uh, I've talked about some time ago. In fact, I was I did a video of this nearly near no slightly longer than 10 years ago. So. Uh, on another channel, but that's for another day. But it's a pocket ARC notebook, just to compare with this. Now this is this is a pocket-sized disc pound notebook, and just to compare it, uh, this is an age bag stroke Clairefontaine notebook. Typical size is 90 by 140. So you get many, many notebooks with this standard size. This is slightly smaller. But before I go into more details, let me just show you this. So this is my File Effects Portland, albeit it's D-ringed, but the, the size is still going to be the same, even though I have d ringed it um, and just for comparison this is a Farlafax sheet from a pocket Farlafax so all these sizes are relative of course but I just wanted to give you an idea of size with all these all these different binders they're much of a muchness but at a pinch, this one will go in a pocket, but not in a jeans pocket. This may not even go in a jeans pocket, but um, it's certainly going to survive in a pocket far better than a ringed binder by virtue of the fact that, as we know, and particularly we know if you've been following the fortunes of my Portland binder here, which has now been de-ringed, the rings were basically, uh, the, the, the rings possibly my fault, but we are where we are, that I discovered that the rings were just uh, an interference fit inside the mechanism and, and uh, I adjusted them one too many times and uh, and they they fell apart, literally. So I have been, I have been looking at disc based binders like this one in more detail i'm quite ke quite keen on the hipster style where you just literally have a whole bunch of sheets with a with a a bulldog clip or a crocodile clip um but today i am going to talk about this which i bought from Cult Pens, C-U-L-T, which is a, a specialist supplier of pens and notebooks, inks, here in the UK. Very, very good service from this company, which is based in Tiverton, in the West Country, in Devon, in the bottom left-hand corner of England, right next door to Cornwall. Uh, and they have an excellent reputation. And one of the things they stock are these well they're, they're made of felt let me just let me just open it and show you momentarily so it's a disc bound binder with the disc sort of inside so it's almost similar to a Moleskine notebook it has that sort of that look that vibe going on so it might well appeal to someone for instance, who likes the size of a Moleskine notebook. Remember, although I haven't got a Moleskine with me, this is the same 
height and width of a moleskin and notebook 90 by 140 millimeters uh, if you're working in imperial measurements then i do apologize but the whole of this video will be in metric sorry about that um i don't mean to but it would just be too complicated if i did all the uh all the uh calculations so we're going to go with this is this is a metric video uh and um and we'll go with that okay so it's very very similar size to a um, this is a moleskin size um but i'm not going to talk much about uh atoma other than to say they had the original patent on these this disc bound system i believe unless someone can correct me it dates from the patent or the design dates from uh, 1948 so it's been going a long time but i think they had the uh, the patent going until I think the 90s and they, they let it lax and then suddenly you've got other binder systems coming in like like the ARC notebook here which was uh, I believe um, a Staples in-house design uh, you can't really get them uh, in stores anymore because there are no Staples stores bricks and mortar stores left in the UK um, they were a victim of the, the sort of shift to online but we're talking about this this thing and I really like this I mean I would normally do a conclusion at the end but I'm um, and everything's subjective isn't it but what I would say is I like this it feels good in the hands I love it I absolutely love it it has a certain a certain something about it that just um, it's just um, it's quite posh for a notebook I think and quite versatile and I do like the form factor I do like the fact it has repositionable pages so I am sort of exploring all sorts of things particularly disc based binders that are like a pocket size um, I'm not discounting binders made by Filofax and other other companies and I particularly think that for reference material, ring bind is better, especially in the larger sizes. But from a pocket point of view, the jury's out as far as I'm concerned. I'm actually looking at these disc based binders. So, this is a collaboration between Atoma, the Belgian company, and they've they've had a over the years they've had a series of collaborations with different designers. So I'm going to do a little bit of writing here. Um, let's see. Actually, no. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I am going to put it to the test, the ultimate test, maybe. Noodler's ink which has a reputation sometimes for bleed through but uh, but we'll um, we'll see what's we'll see what's what so um, so this is this is a collaboration between Atoma the Belgian company and Alan I've got to spell this right So I've probably pronounced it wrong, but um, but there we go. In fact, Alan Berto, he's a he's a designer, and uh, I believe he's a teacher as well, and he he's also an architect. So obviously a talented chap, and he he has this company called the Alan Berto Design Works. which is based in Brussels. I'm not sure whether Atoma are also based in Brussels, but you know, Belgium. In fact, this company, Atoma, they've got a Belgian royal warrant. And uh, I've read that, I'm, I'm not sure whether it's dependent on the warrant. 
I'm not quite sure, but 80%, 80% of what they make is for domestic consumption, for home use. And then another 20% gets sent abroad. Now, I don't know whether that's some sort of rule, but we are where we are. Um, so, you've got this collaboration between Alan Berto Design Works and Atoma. And what, uh, what Alan Berto calls this, this particular product, he calls it, um, appropriately enough, the Atoma book, which is, which is, um, it, it's, it does exactly what it says on the tin, as it were, the Atoma book. And he goes on to describe this book. Um, this isn't the only disc-bound product uh, he has designed. Uh, looking at their website, he does an awful lot of furniture, particularly chairs, but all sorts of things. But he describes this in the blurb as, and I'm going to write this down, long-winded, because it's quite an interesting thing. He says... He describes it as the classic Belgian notebook. I wish I could write faster, but we are where we are. With reconfigurable Pages. Now, that's what we all want, isn't it? Something with reconfigurable pages. But then he goes on to say, updated, updated with smart, thick, smart, I've got to be careful here, smart, thick, Eco-friendly covers. Now, the eco-friendly, I don't know the makeup of this, these covers. Eco-fiendly, let's put an R in there, covers. Which is, you know, fairly, fairly self-explanatory. This, this felt, it, it feels like felt. It's actually stiffer than I thought. And I'm just wondering whether it will just, it will stay like this. Or whether it will gradually get softer with use, more flexible, and that flexibility is important because I I like the idea of flatability. I'm not sure wh whether I'm going to use this in anger or just keep it as a collection piece, but you can certainly fold it back, and it stay it stays flat. So I'm happy with the flatability, um, and it's got an elastic band so you can shut it. And then open it, shut it, and up, open it. But as you can see, if you shut it, then you might have to bend it open. But look at that. You can even fold it back on itself. It, it, the design allows you to do that, which, which is uh, a plus point. It's one of the pluses with this design. It doesn't have the same flexibility as more common binders. Uh, where you can just fold it over completely. But I like this cover because it, it's so, sort of synonymous with with a, a soft cover book, semi-soft colour cover. So I, I like that. Um, but it's a collaboration. Now, this paper size is slightly different because... Although Moleskins and most of the other books are 90 by 140, this is slightly narrower. And this, this particular size is not 90 by 140, but 80 by 140. And so that's, that's quite important when you're getting paper. Although, having said that, if you got 
90 by 140 paper which you can get with this this vertical measurement you could potentially cut it off with a pair of scissors or a guillotine but you can get 80 by 140 specifically for this binder um, most of these most of these binders are actually a slightly different size to this but this is actually 80 by 140 um, this paper is uh, 90 GSM so let's just have a look at this because I've been fairly fairly hard with the uh, you can see that there's some deterioration well not deterioration but it's the ink has really been attacking this really been attacking this paper uh, but we're going to persevere so um, noodler's ink with a medium nib on a Kaweco sport pen uh, and it and it can be really and really aggressive. It's a really good test of paper because this paper is promoted by Atoma. All their paper seems to be ninety GSM, and it actually the company actually talk in glowing terms. If you look at this, it says it doesn't say ink friendly. It actually says ink loving 90 grams per square meter paper um, now this is the, the, the most aggressive test i can do and you can see that there is some feathering quite a lot of feathering alan berto and the berto is really really aggressive and this you know it's it has been a real real uh, powerful test of this but if we look on the other side there is some there is some ghosting but and there is even a tiny bit of bleed through there and there maybe because I was writing so slow uh, but this is this is a really really tough test for any paper so I'm a little bit disappointed with the the feathering but it's not too bad and I'd rather have a bit of feathering than bleed through so it's actually it's actually passed the bleed through test more more or less I I feel confident that I could turn over and I will do and write on this page and it's not going to be too illegible as it were so um, this is a this is a test of this pen and this or specifically this paper um as far as the uh as far as these discs are concerned um they're aluminium most discs um are plastic in the case of arc uh, uh but you can get plastic ones and aluminium ones i, I believe william hannah does does aluminium i think it's a sign of quality and i i have a project going i've got a project that i'm embarking upon where i'm going to use aluminium i quite like it i quite like the design but more about there is a a disadvantage of these which i'll which i'll go into a little bit later um apparently this paper is made of what they describe atoma describes as long fibers which more readily hang on to hang on to these discs um how much did i pay for this i mean it's such a, a, a it's such an unusual design um well let me let me tell you how much a moleskin costs a similar moleskin with the typically your your um, a moleskin pocket size moleskin you'll get 90 sheets it's this size 90 by 140 72 gsm so the paper in a moleskin is thinner uh, some people say not so such good quality uh, but it is what it is and you wouldn't normally use uh, you certainly wouldn't use noodler's ink in a moleskin or moleskin but typically as i record this mid-september 2023 
a Moleskine, certainly from Colt Pens, I actually had a look and uh, checked it today, £16.99, so £17. This cost me £13.50 with 100 sheets. Um, so slightly more sheets than a Moleskine, but it is much of a muchness. And it cost me £13.50, as as you can see. And the advantage you, with this is that uh, you've got repositionable and replaceable pages. So it's uh, it, it will live to fight another day. You're, you, you're only going to, the, on the second load, you're only going to be paying for the paper. So £13.50. I don't know whether that's a bargain, but I'll tell you what, I'm really, really pleased with the purchase. Really, really pleased indeed. I've been, I've been after one of these. It's been on, in, on the back burner, on my, on my secondary shopping list for over a year now. And I finally took the plunge and bought a whole bunch of stuff so that I could get free shipping. Always good to get free shipping, isn't it? Uh, and then bought, bought a load of stuff. So you will come across over the next few weeks quite a few reviews of things that I have bought from Cult Pens. Uh, they're not the only company I buy things from, but uh, uh, I, uh, as you've probably seen in my Cult Pens mail time that I did um, a couple of days ago, uh, you'll see what I bought and so I'll be reviewing. So... Uh, £13.50. This is actually available in nominal A5 and nominal A4 as well. Um, nominal A5 is going to cost you £32. And nominal A4 will cost you £40, £45. Okay, so... I don't know whether that represents good value to you, but uh, I'm um, I'm not interested in the larger sizes, but I am interested in this pocket size, 80 by 140. I really, really like this size. It doesn't really matter if it's 90 by 140. I mean, it's a fairly nominal thing, but this is okay. This is okay. Let's just shut it and just compare the size from an outer cover point of view well you can see that it's there's a little bit of overlap the actual the actual atoma stroke alan berto cover makes it slight with the rings makes it stick out slightly it's actually slightly wider than a moleskin would be um but nevertheless it's okay and height wise it's more or less more or less the same um, how much does it cost for this paper? Uh, certainly from Cult Pens, um, 60 sheets of this paper would cost you £5, which works out at 8.3 pence a sheet. Although that is for, that's for lined paper. If you want squared, or you want plain, I don't know why plain is more expensive, frankly, but we are where we are. That's going to cost you, that's going to set you about £6 for 60 sheets. So that's obviously 10, so whoops, not one, <laughs> 10 p per sheet, which... I suppose it's quite a lot. It's more than a sheet of paper from Filofax themselves. Now, I what I did, I did a comparison as direct as I could with the Filofax pocket notebook, not the ring binder paper, the paper that fits in the pocket mo notebook. And the pocket notebook on a Filofax is conveniently this size 9 by 40 and they got, they've actually got some nice paper so the Filofax paper is 100 GSM 
So I've not tried it, but 100 GSM uh, could be good for fountain pen. This is 90 GSM, and that is uh, 295 for 32 sheets, which is which works out 9.2p per sheet. But um, this is this is. I mean, I'll 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 talk about money. As, uh, when I go through the cons, because obviously I'm talking about this in glowing terms, I do like, I do like the 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 the, the vibe going on with this. I really really like it, and I am going to use it. I'm not sure what I'm going to use it for, but but I would never ever allow myself to be put off using a product simply because I can't find a use for it at that particular moment, and. Certainly, when it comes to notebooks, I always go by the uh, n plus one theory, where n plus one is the number of notebooks, which uh, which is good, and where n is the number that you currently have. And uh, I mean, I'm a, I I, uh, I sometimes find it difficult to know when to stop. I mean, you are talking about you are talking to, well i am talking to you i'm a person that has i think i've got quite uh substantially less than that but at one point i had 78 bicycles and seven cars which is just silly isn't it i don't have seven cars now i just have one and i don't really use that at the moment um uh, because because it needs a new crankshaft, and I haven't got round to uh, rebuilding the engine. Um, but what are the cons of this? Well, there are some cons, and the first thing, the first thing is plain paper, and this is a good test as to whether this one page going over and leaning on this felt will actually work it feels okay plain paper well you can't apparently get plain you can't buy one of these with plain paper now i'm i normally go for plain paper as you probably know and uh i had to buy one of these with lined paper so just a bit of a bit of a pain but you can buy plain paper paper in the packs but for some reason they don't they don't supply these with um with plain paper but so that that is one of the cons if you like um secondly the elastic strap now i was a little bit disappointed with this because especially because this is uh this is ostensibly a a luxury item um but have a look at this so i love the fact that this is replaceable it's they've thought about this they haven't stapled it on to the actual felt they've given the design allows for replacement of this or even removal but look at this let me just uh let me just put it over some paper so you can see it. Now, the uh, let me just move it up nearer the camera. So the the actual the actual um, I think uh, whoever sewed this on with the uh, with the industrial sewing machine must have been uh, the worst for wear that morning or afternoon because it it's just not very. It's just not very good at all. Um, so I think given this is a quality product, ostensibly, they could have made a, a better job of the elastic, but it's no big deal. So I'm going to give that a bit of a, a bad mark, I think. But there is another one. There's another fundamental problem. Not a problem, but... I'm actually going to put it down as table damage, potentially. And that is this reason. Now, if you've got a polished wood table, I mean, this is a, this is a, uh, 
uh, a domestic English kitchen table probably dating from the 1880s or 1890s and it has the patina of life and I really like that all these marks and there are a few burn marks it's it's seen some life but if if you have a polished mahogany table from the early 1800s and I'm talking as an ex antiques dealer here there is no way that I would be jotting notes by having this upside down and sliding around scratching my fine mahogany table and this design is a great design and it's great for trains, it's great for cafes, it's great for formica, it's great for tablecloths. It is not great for mahogany tables that are that have some value. Um, so that's something that you need to be aware of. Um, there's another thing which I'm going to jot down um, and let me just write it before you read it. If I can spell it right. Okay, so this felt, I bet that in a year's time under a microscope you could look at this felt with a 300 times magnification microscope and you would see it moving because there would be so many microscopic animals living in the felt. Now, if that puts you off, don't worry about it because there are microscopic animals living all over our bodies and they don't bother us. And in some ways there are goods for us. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm delving into the, uh, the realms of, um, uh, something or other here that maybe I shouldn't go into but I suppose at least the design is such that you can remove the felt from the rings and then you could clean it but there is this there is this thing I mean if you if you look at paper under a microscope you'll see you'll see things moving around on the surface of the paper um, so it's it, 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 you know it's, it's it is just the way of it but if you want something that is a notebook in a hospital, for instance, this is not what you buy. This is not what you buy either. You get something with plastic, plastic covers, which are, you know, easy clean and under a microscope, there's very, very little undulating surface for, for things to, creatures to live. Um, but it is, it could be an issue, this felt thing, it could be an issue for those people that that, that uh, get the shivers about cleanliness. Um, I'm okay with it. I am okay with it. Um, so there's a possible black mark there. And then finally, this is the big one. And it's cost. So, typically... I will use 15 sheets, 15 sheets of paper uh, that I make every morning while I'm having a coffee uh, so that I can use them during the, uh, during the day. And um, uh, I, I use cheap printer paper so I can get three sheets of this out of one sheet of A4 printer paper and the cost over a year is very very nominal however however how much would it cost me to use this plain paper let's assume that it is that I'm going to use this size even though I'm actually using this but just suppose I have an epiphany and say right I'm going to use this paper from now on 15 sheets of this every day and I'm just going to use this as my main my main uh, binder as opposed to my Frankenfax which is personal size paper this paper um, 
Well, if you do the maths per year, it's an incredible £547 per annum using this paper. So I think for most people, they wouldn't use paper in that way. Uh, they would uh, they would maybe use this for special occasions only, and this is the dilemma. I'm going to I'm going to put this nib back in its cover. Um, the uh, the issue is that you would want to use this for special occasions. For instance, uh, um, a diary or uh, maybe um, a journal. But this paper is not suited, in my opinion, this display system is not suited to long-term, long-term use. If you take a page, and this is 1986, so my birthdays, anniversaries, special occasions. So just imagine... You're using this, and this has been knocking about in your Farfax for f nearly 40 years. And one of the one of the holes rips through. You can easily repair that using a um, like a like a, a, a hole reinforcer reinforcement. But not so not so easy on here, is it? And so inevitably, as you turn the pages, as you move them and rearrange them there will be wear to the point where i mean i personally think the wear would be sufficient to for it to be ruined after maybe 20 or 30 repositions but i i don't know um so i would rule this out for long term what i call long term high value use and i'd also dismiss this for short term low value use so what would i use this for well, I'll tell you what I am going to use it for. I am going to use it for uh, as an inbox, just just occasionally because I do like I do like the vibe I get when I use this, and so I have a number of inboxes, all sorts of things, everything from the actual. Uh, Digi digital inboxes like a voice memo through to paper based ones whether it's a, a sheet of old paper or a, or or my rapidly becoming hipster pda stroke inbox portland's but i think this is nice i mean i've got about 12 jackets i don't need 12 jackets but it's nice to have 12 jackets and i and i pick one and I use it. It's a bit like people have more than one watch. I've got a few watches. I will change the scenery. I will change the scenery, change the watch, and it gives me a feel-good factor. And I think as an inbox, this is my final conclusion about this collaboration between the uh, Alan Berto Design Works company and the Atoma company. This represents to me an opportunity to change my inbox and it would give me a feel-good factor um i think i think from that perspective this is an absolutely fantastic fantastic design and i i i can thoroughly recommend it so thank you very much for watching until next time goodbye